So on to this next segment. Okay. I wanted to ask you more about, because you, you help people with their diet. I mean, you help people with so many things, but you just got through talking about the muscle testing. Is that something that you also use to help people figure out what diet they need or how they need to do weight loss as well? Okay. Um, in these days, I am purely a vehicle for Charlie. Okay. I, I wouldn't dare to treat anybody of my own butt. Even after 40 years of practice of so many different techniques, I wouldn't dare um, assume that I know what's best for a person. Okay, just to put that in context. So this is my definition of true healing. That from within my ego, I am incapable of truly being effective because I'm coming from my ego. So to truly be effective, I rely on Charlie because Charlie can connect with the other person wherever they are in the world. We don't, you know, we do not need to be in the same room. And so the way that I work is that I have learned to structure a language of communication with Charlie. And it's always yes and no. So I begin by saying, what do you need? So I focus on the person. I look into their soul. What do you need? Do you need any structural work? Yes or no. Do you need any nutrition or dietary advice? Yes or no. Do you need any emotional work? Yes or no. Do you need any acupuncture work? Yes or no. Do you need any energetic work? Yes or no. Uh, often when people first come to me, um, there, there will be a need, not exclusively, depends on the level of development, but there will be a need for me to work on their chakric system, on their, um, on their, on their aura. There may be gaps in their aura, holes in their aura. Um, they may have had previous physical accidents, surgery, and then they will need a specific type of aura intervention to heal that, to, to close that, so that that part of the body can move on. Uh, because trauma um, can be emotional, but it can also be as a result of physical accidents, including surgery, needles, insertions, whatever, yeah? So I work my way through the person. And once I begin that process, it will change from week to week. My focus is not to help people with their symptoms because the symptoms have an underlying cause. And to get to that underlying cause is where the true healing happens. Mm -hmm. And most therapies, most healers in the world whatever alternative, they, they're dealing with symptoms. But to deal, to deal with the cause, well, that's really hard because the client doesn't know what the cause is. They haven't got a clue because the cause is a trauma which has been blocked from their consciousness. So this is where I rely on Charlie. So, Char well, I rely on Charlie for it all, but this is where Charlie comes at his best because he helps me to discover, to find out, to work out where in their life, at what point in their life, the, the traumas occur, the blockages occur. And so I will then go with the person to five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 years old, occasionally to a past life. And we, we heal that emotion which which gets repeated throughout their life in different ways but you need to, you need to be able to get to the seed to the kernel as well as the shadows which have developed over the years so you know you'll have an intense experience when you're well, for the sake of argument we'll say six seven eight you have an intense experience but then that will get repeated 
when you're 20, when you're 32, when you're 40, whatever, about three or four times. And that will be a major one, but there'll be other ones which will be of a smaller character, which also need to be dealt with. So when, when you and I spoke the last time and I spoke, I shared with you about your ego soul fragment integration, this is what I was referring to because the more of those traumas are, are hidden within our psyche, which are out of awareness. We're not aware we have them, but they're there. And so they affect the level of integration with our soul. So they affect our capacity to truly be in our hearts. You know, we can all move into our heart for a few minutes here and there, but to be able to stay there for longer and longer periods, requires dealing with this backlog of emotional trauma. And this emotional trauma has affected the structure of the body. It has affected the, uh, the meridians, the acupuncture meridians. Um, it, it has affected with some people, the chakric system. So all of that needs to be dealt with and you cannot do that overnight. So to, to be with me, to work with me, is actually to grow in consciousness, to grow in self connection with one soul. It is actually a process. In the olden days, you would say, oh, you know, you, you go to see a teacher and you spend a few years with the teacher, hoping to, uh, to open up your, your psychic whatever. Uh, all of that is old hat. Uh, today, uh, what people like I can do is to work with an individual and to literally open them up so that they flower into their true self. But this is not an overnight thing. And in the process, symptoms disappear. Yeah. And this is true healing in the true sense of the word. But it's not an overnight thing. And not everybody moves at the same pace because true, true growth, I mentioned this at the beginning when I said to make space, we need to practice stroke experience, emotional intensity. And what I mean by this is that we as human beings, because of the traumas, of the experiences of our childhood, for most of us, we have learned our, our minds to protect us. We have learned to suppress uncomfortable emotions. And we have learned to suppress intense emotional, uh, intense mental conflict between different belief systems. What I mean by this is that if you think of yourself as a house with an electrical system in the house, you've got electrical breakers, whether it's 30 amps, 60 amp, 90 amp. So the lighting circuit for the overhead lights doesn't require, you know, you can have thin wires. If you want to plug a heater that is three kilowatts, you need a bigger electrical system with thicker wires. If you want a shower, electrical shower, you need to have an even thicker electrical system of 30 kilowatts or 60 kilowatts. So if you want higher power to run through your system, you need bigger breakers and you need thicker cables that can cope with more electricity traveling through those electrical wires. The human body is like this. We are electrical and we have a wiring system. We discussed the, this before with someone, um, Steve, you guys, and he, he was talking about this, how you, you the nerves calcify or stuff over, you know, like your, your nerves, nervous system calcifies and you don't learn to experience all your emotions. But I teach a vision board class, and one of the things that I would teach people is 
Most people tiptoe through life trying to make it safely to the grave. And that is a um, quote by Earl Nightingale. So people tend to start pushing things out of their life, like all your big dreams, you push them out. You're like trying to play it safe. Romance and love, you, you try to just be safe and try not to get to fall in love anymore or to get excited about things anymore or to take risks like making a big move. And we just try to do less and less so that we don't touch those nerves anymore, right? Or the, those sensations, would you say that's along the lines of what you're saying? Similar, but not quite. <laughs> Well, maybe this if is a, a, a product of that, specific. right? Can I be more specific? It's a product of that, though, because we, we tend to... Sorry, I missed that because... Uh... Well, it's a product of what you're saying, is this is what we do in life. We just try to play it safe. Don't make waves. Don't make big moves. Absolutely. This is, this is part of the indoctrination... within our society and it is also an inbuilt aspect of our egos whereby we don't want to stand out because the nail that stands out is the one that gets hit first Ooh. yeah so yes. as um this is a, as a group so as a group um this is a genetic thing if if, if we separate ourselves from the pack the predators are going to go for you because you're the one who they're going to notice yeah so if you've got if you've got a hundred um um gazelle zebras if you you've got a hundred zebras okay they all look the same who are the lion the lionesses who are they going to go for they they they're waiting for something that's going to stand out like maybe a broken leg or something different because they all work together as a pack they need to be able to focus on the one that they want to go after it needs to stand out if you stand out from the group the predators are going to go for you within our society if you stand out from the group the psychopaths are going to go for you. <laughs> okay. The so, narcissist, the sociopath, the psychopath. The... <laughs> so it, is, it is a protection mechanism of the ego, often from the mind and the indoctrination belief systems. Anyway. So I was digressing and I've lost the plot there. What was I talking about? Well, we were talking about how you, uh, how you work together with Charlie to assess what a person's need is, even though they might come to you saying, hey, I want to lose weight, you go through all the steps of what is it exactly they need, structure, you know, acupuncture, emotional, yeah. energetic work, because those are, I guess the weight you're saying is, a symptom it's not the underlying problem absolutely right so so what i was actually speaking about was emotional intensity right the importance of it and so what we do is we we create breakers the equivalent of an elect of a house the electrical system we create breakers so the when we are when we have a lot of repressed emotions the breakers are very low that means that the slightest emotional intensity the slightest emotional conflict with another person will will throw the breaker off so we are not able to experience the emotional conflict of our needs versus someone else's needs, for example. And so the mind comes in and that emotional intensity, which reared its head, 
will then very quickly get suppressed and put down into our muscles. So this is why people get muscle tensions, muscle spasms, lower back, upper shoulders, the neck, you name it. It is suppressed emotions because we don't have the capacity to experience intense emotions. It is a protective mechanism. The same occurs at a mental level. You know, uh, I am an atheist, okay, and I believe in God, okay? So the two of them talking with each other, people get very agitated. Why are you getting agitated? Different view, everybody's entitled to their perception. Of course, one still needs to say, well, what do you mean by God and what do you mean by being an atheist? But nevertheless, there is a mental conflict and we can't deal with it. And so we get agitated. That is the breaker coming in to, to stop that because we cannot, we, we, we don't have the internal fortitude to contemplate opposing perspectives. So that is what's required to grow as a human being. We need to put ourselves in the way of emotional intensity as well as mental intensity. We need to be able to increase the size of the electrical cables in our body so that we can increase the breakage, the breaking point. So, you know, we begin with five watts, we can then build it up to 20, 30, 60. We want to be able to hold a lot of intensity, a lot of emotional intensity and a lot of feeling in ourselves. Yeah. And that, that is the real work. So that is the work. So when people come to work with me, we have to go through this process of building that emotional and mental intensity. And that means that although I can take you back to when you're seven or eight years old and put you in touch with a particular emotion, and get you to experience that in yourself and learn how to forgive that other person and yourself and how to get strong in the process, you can only progress at your own pace. You can only progress at the pace of how quickly you can build up your emotional intensity. And that can take two, three years, four years. We're all different. Oh, that was pretty intense. <laughs> I love it. Um, I think that, did anyone have any questions or about that? Because you're so I, I, I was just going to say, Sal, we've all increased our breaker by listening to what you just had to say. Know. And, you know, like it's a, that was a really opening experience of, of helping to open those, those pathways to, to viewing things. You know, do we view things emotionally? Do we view them mentally? Do we, how, you know, when somebody asks, how do you feel? We often go back to our emotional, but there's, there's, a, we have to start to, you know, like separate some of this and, and think about it. And, and part of it is a mental process of thinking about it. We don't, we don't think about things. We just sort of uh, go by, you know, that emotional um, response, but we don't stop to like, how do I feel about this? What is the, the difference? And it becomes mindful. We have to become mindful, not automatic. And so um, it's a process we, we need to learn. Absolutely. And it's an ongoing learning experience. I'll share one with yourselves, which I experienced the other day. Um, like I've said, I, I have been through so many different ways of trying to achieve spirituality, okay? I've gone through so many dead end paths and they were all, they were all dead ends and I've tried so many. And 
so these days I've had to start again, which means that I now rely only on what Charlie tells me. So my God, my guru, call it what you will, my source of inspiration, my source of knowledge, my source of understanding is Charlie. I, there are many other pathways. There are many pathways out there. I have no doubt of it, but for me, it is Charlie. And he has proven himself to me over the years. So I'm happy with that. So anyway, so I was listening to a podcast of uh, some other people talking about spirituality and they were talking about, um, they were conflating spirituality with intergalactic beings and moving up to a different density and It reminded me a lot of Kathara, something that I studied in 2012, which was a very, very complex system of a lot of meditation, a lot of practices, and it very quickly developed into something terribly weird. Once, this, once they started having a language for the dog people and the wasted people and the other people, from the galaxy, I knew they'd gone too far. They were mixing pure creative intuition with a whole lot of other stuff. Anyway, they became very popular and it dispersed worldwide. So I was listening to someone and I could see, I, as I was hearing the echoes of this old system for me. And they were talking with such self-assurity that I began to experience my agitation between my way of looking at the world and their way of looking at the world. And I could only take 45 minutes. <laughs> my breakers went after 45 These two different perceptions of the world. However, that is no reason, and I will go back there, because it is good to experience the conflict of different perceptions, however much we disagree with them. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We need to develop our own uh, electrical network, both emotionally and mentally. Mm -hmm. um to, to me, this was, uh, it was like a testimony to what I feel like I personally am going through right now because I can be this person that takes on the challenge and wants to do these new and exciting things. And then when I get into the swing of it, and so you're, you're already standing on the, the tightrope and now you're like halfway through it and you, you start to look down and you begin to become fearful because you made the decision and you, you started forward with the actions. But now the fear part kicks in. Did, can you just tell us how to brace ourselves to move through that quickly or <laughs> like, how do we get back to that part where we are facing the intensity versus looking down? Cause now we're looking down like, Oh, I don't know if I should have done this or I don't know if I can finish or. Yeah. I that, don't... <laughs> that, that, is, that is meant what you're saying is, is, mm -hmm. is from the mind. Right. So when, once you start asking questions, this is a mind issue. Yeah. Um, for me, what is important for me i i no longer use the word spirituality but most people use it so for the sense from the perspective of true spiritual development for me it's very very simple it is to experience our emotions to build up our intensity that means you meditate every morning you sit down and I, I've, I've got a number of meditations on, on, on my YouTube. And you do those meditations. And little by little, what will happen 
is that emotions will surface. The thing is, we don't want the ego to dictate what to do, because the ego doesn't want to know. The ego, the ego wants change without doing the work. So mm. what we want. <laughs> Hold on, you say it again. The ego wants what? The ego wants change without doing the work. Oh boy. That, that's a highlight right there. <laughs> it does. This is a highlight, especially Ooh. these days. Big, 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 like the flat the light should go flashing when you see Oh God. Well, let's see. We'll write that one down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to I had to make you say it again because people got to hear that. Like oh, that, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, mm. because that is how we. Be, that's how we begin. You see, we are so uncomfortable in ourselves that we're now looking for answers. Mm. This is how we we start on the the treadmill of so called spirituality, because now we're looking for answers. So we 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 go to Buddhism or we go to I don't know whatever. So we go to all these different things and we now begin to do these practices. But these practices don't necessarily address what is important because what is important from my perspective is to do the work of our emotional intensity. And to do that, we need to sit down, meditate, focus on the body, connect, learn how to connect with the body, the the meditations are there in my uh, in my YouTube videos. Connect with the body, and by the way, some of those exercises will help to let go of physical tensions. It will get rid of symptoms, physical symptoms, if you give it yourself a chance to do the exercises. Not one day or two day, but you know, month after month. You have to let it become part of who you are. Anyway, so you lie there, you connect with your body. And what will happen is that emotions will surface. Whatever is, whatever is on the surface of your subconscious will surface. You don't want the ones which are deep down. You want the one which is ready to be dealt with. Well, and when that surfaces, you experience the emotion. You connect with it. You allow yourself to cry. You allow yourself to experience the intensity within your body. And another highlight so that you don't have to dig deep down the ones that are on the surface that's what you have to deal with and usually people people say what they feel but they don't really know that that's what they're doing because they have these conversations like it says through the overflow of the mouth the heart speaks right we tend to oh i'm, I'm i don't like this or i'm a bit mad or i'm afraid that you know and we we but we don't really realize, like, we're, we're literally feeling that emotion. We say things that, that, that give us the signal if, you know, if we even just listen to what, what it is, right? And it usually takes someone on the outside sometimes to tell us, like, it sounds like you're afraid. It sounds like you're, you know, doubting yourself or you're worried. And I'll just let you go on. <laughs> I just, I just want to highlight the things that you're saying so people can understand that. Like, you don't have to dig down deep. These these things are right there on the surface. So deal with what's on the surface. Do with where I you're at right now. I yeah. appreciate what you said. And it was a really good intervention because you then reminded me of something else, which is that here's another tip, which is that when we have a conflict, uh, a disagreement with someone or other, and we then go away. If you look back over your experiences, you will see that your brain goes down to the dust and you're now talking to yourself and you keep regurgitating again and again and again. And I would have said this, I would have said that, this, that or the other. What your mind is doing is applying the brakes, the electrical brakes, because you cannot cope with the intensity of the emotion that might happen otherwise. So what we need to do at that moment to begin to develop our emotional muscles is we ask ourselves, what's my emotion? 
So I've got all the words going, but what, what is my emotion? Just keep asking, what is my emotion? And keep working at connecting with that emotion and experience that emotion. So beyond the words, we want to move away from the words to the emotion. The words are stopping us experiencing the emotion. So can I ask this? Because um, sometimes I used to ask myself, why am I so angry? Because sometimes we can't identify why the, we feel the feeling, right? Because sometimes it's just passing through and maybe I don't know where it comes from. Maybe I don't know that what happened yesterday is still bothering me. And so you don't need to know. my beginning was finding out why am I so angry or why am I so whatever, whatever the feeling is. The emotion. So the emotion. <laughs> so at that moment, when you say to yourself, why am I so angry? You've got the answer right there. What is it like to experience anger? Focus on your anger. In your, sec in your second chakra, below the belly button, is the seat of the emotions. So if you want to know about anger, you ask yourself, why am I so angry? You now, you do your best to connect with anger in your lower abdomen. And then you remind yourself of the time when you blew. For whatever reason, you blew. You were angry. That was, that was the surface experience. There, there's something below that. But why am I angry? So now, so now I go, you know, I find a quiet space. And I go, I connect with my lower abdomen. I connect with the memory of the previous day, if that's when it was. And I reconnect with the experience of being angry. I give myself permission to be angry. Yeah, not, not angry as in go off into a rage, but be angry as in like a physical sensation within my body. And the better you get at it, the more you can get to a point when you can say, what's behind my anger? Because there's another emotion. So the, the anger is what's on the surface, is the reaction, the protective reaction. Beneath that could be a whole lot of, it could be envy, it could be grief, you know, it could be sadness, it could be pure anxiety of fear, a sense of loss, it could be any other emotion. Most people, most people have learned to use anger and this isn't true anger, this is rage. They've learned to use anger as a means of deflecting from the underlying emotion. But before we can get to the underlying emotion, we need to be able to experience consciously that surface emotion of anger so that we don't get frightened by it and that we don't need to react with it. We simply need to experience it in ourselves. Easier said than done, different times of the month, right? Full moon, hey, oh, watch out. 